Hello and welcome to my advanced Giovanna guide. So in this guide we're going to be going over specific things to do with Giovanna to get her as effective, like to get her running as effectively as possible, as well as some general things you should do when running her. So all right, we're going to start with items like we always do. So let's look at items. So her best items are generally speed items. Uh, movement bangle can be good on her. Magic damage increase is good for increasing her magic damage with all of her abilities. Uh, res Earring is also really good on her. The reason for this is sometimes she kind of commits or overcommits by design because you want to get trekking for TP off to keep her TP levels high. So putting a Res Earring on her is usually a good idea. So let's go grab one of those. Should be two of them here. All right, we'll take one of that. All right, and then we'll also throw a speed item on her. Okay, so she wants a speed item because her, her base speed is quite slow, and she wants a res earring for durability. That's Honestly, this is probably her best setup, uh, these two items. Okay, we're just going to start. We're just running lower unit count just to focus on Giovanna. So what does Giovanna generally want to be doing? Uh, if you've been following this channel, especially if you follow the Triangle Strategy content, she generally wants to spam Jalad Barrage. The reason for this is she can generate 2 TP a turn, and for 3 TP, she can hit, like, what is it, 6 enemies in a line for good magic damage. So if we look at Gelid Barrage, 309, that's pretty good. Hits 1 to 6. So this can hit quite a few things, especially if they're lined up, and it can hit pretty hard. And for 3 TP, that's not that bad, especially considering she can generate 2 TP a turn from passive regeneration and then trekking for TP. So... That is one of her best things. Uh, she works really well with Corentin, who I'm, I am running in this match. The reason for this is he creates a ton of ice tiles, which allows her to spam gel barrage. So it's really simple why that's good. Uh, okay, G uh, Giovanna gains an extra TP from trekking for TP uh, when moving five or more tiles. So this allows her to top off her own TP and spam Jalad Barrage more than every other turn because she will have turns where she can't use it, but she'll have fewer of them because she's getting two TP a turn. So in two turns, she gets four TP instead of two. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we'll just do standard Medina stuff. Just give everyone a lot of TP. Pretty simple. We'll start setting up some Jalad Barrages and stuff like that. Okay, so Giovanna can be in danger when committing to a position. So when she pushes up, or if she pushes up, she can be in a lot of danger from doing this. And one way to get around the danger is to throw Res Earring or Gila Res on her. The reason why this is good is it lets her be a little bit more risky than she could be normally, and it allows you to consistently get off trekking. So in order to make to like get maximum use of your trekking, you should always be paying attention to how far she can move. So like there are going to be instances where either enemies or allies are going to prevent you from optimally tracking. Like in the case of like moving to or away from things. Uh, in this case, what I can do here, I don't have to use Jelled Barrage. It would actually be better to use Gaia's Roar. So Gaia's Roar is another one of her abilities. Her, her main two abilities, honestly, that she's going to be using a lot are Jelled Barrage and Gaia's Roar. IV Beam is great when you can use it. As you can see here, the damage is quite good, and the chance to immobilize is also huge. Uh, however, grass and wheat field tiles are quite uncommon for some reason. Uh, a lot of like empty grass tiles tend to be considered flat lands, which is kind of stupid, uh, considering there's grass on them. And then also for things like this, flower bed, you would think it would work here too, but you'd be wrong. I don't know why it doesn't work on a flower bed. It completely would make sense, but it doesn't. So unfortunately it's kind of finicky with how it works. Uh, but Gaia's Roar can be used on any tile. And as you can see, it can hit up to four things here. So we should do that. So we can Gaia's Roar. And then we can Trek. So you only need to move five tiles, five or more. So we can just like count one, two, three, four, Five. So this still keeps her kind of close. So she gets trekking. So that just helps her stay topped off. And then what we can have to do with Corintin. So you can Glacial Moon. This is 
So now there's a bunch of ice tiles. So we'll, like, we'll start slowly moving back because we're getting pushed. Now, one thing to note, you might think, oh, you can trek and get your extra TP. Um, you actually can if you if you trek and then act. Or actually, no, you can't. It, the, so the way this game works, like if I go and move and cast, I have to commit to the action. So you, you won't have enough TP ahead of time to get that off. So basically, if you start off with one TP, you can't use a gel barrage because you'll get two when your turn starts. And then when you go to move and attack, you need that, th that third TP to use it up front because it won't let you move and then use it because of the way the game, the game uh, handles actions. So something to keep in mind. Uh, we might as well like Sunfall or something for fun. Okay, so we will now Giovanna. So let's say she doesn't catch a battery right now, right? What can she do? She can still be useful. She can still, like, trek and then throw, like, a tie or an ice stone or a fire stone, depending on whichever one. But you can see that she can still be useful. She can still set up her own ice tiles. So even if she doesn't have a battery, if she doesn't have, like, another mage creating ice tiles for her, she can still run up to groups of enemies, throw ice tiles, damage them with AoE, which is still really good, and get TP trekking. And now she's going to be at 3 TP. And then next turn, she'll regen to four. And then she can cast Gel Barrage and then move. And then, like, she could actually run up here and cast it. These are resistant, though, but she can cast Gel Barrage, move, and then she'll be uh, she'll be at two. So but what we're going to do in this case is all fast acting instead of just to kind of show. Because a lot of it is playing around her TP. Let's see now. So, for example... You always want to count the tiles to make sure you're getting trekking off. So one, two, three, four. So in this case, I would not get a trekking off, but I can gel barrage these both. And then if I move here, it's the same situation. Um, you always want to take note of what you can hit. So one thing I could do, I have like a few options. I could like gel barrage like this. Uh, if I wanted to, I could run over here. And large firestone these because they're weak to fire. And she's pretty tanky to magic and pretty, like, tanky in general. Not extremely tanky, but these guys shouldn't be too much of a threat. They're going to deal some good damage, but she'll die in, like, three or four hits. And she also has a res earring, so it can be relatively safe to do this. If I'm worried about anyone, it's Eridor. <laughs> Alright, we can king shield here. Just kind of pull everyone... She's really good with Eridor, because Eridor naturally gets enemies to line up around him, as you can see there. Um, let's just do one of these. I don't think I should create a nice wall, but I might just because it's funny. Alright, let's put you up here. We have to get Frederica out of there, because if she dies we lose, so... That actually was pretty good. That's pretty huge. I mean, just hit two things, but I just did that for fun. Okay. So, without a battery, she still has good damage. Uh, with a battery, she obviously will deal more. So, if I battery her, uh, right now it's kind of a waste. So, let's just do this. Let's just move. We probably need to heal these, I would say. So, we can't heal both of them. So, we will heal Eridor, who looks like he's about to die. It's probably a good idea. Hit him with a large heal. Alright. Benedict will just wait. Okay, so she can do a few things here. Uh, one thing I could do, I could move back here. And I can Gaia's Roar again. If you have a battery, Gaia's Roar is actually very good. It's, it's usually pretty easy. Like, look how many things I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit all those enemies over there. This is way better than just using a gel barrage. Uh, getting Gaia's Roars off with battery is her, objectively, it's like her strongest thing. If you can keep getting her batteried, like if you just have Medina and Julio, just keep, continually spam her. She can, she can just Gaia's Roar things from really far away and deal really insane damage. We do have to watch out for Frederica, though. They might kill her. 
we lose if, if they kill her, so <laughs> to be a little careful here. Oil. This ain't ideal. Okay, so yeah, let's provoke. All right, he's immobilized, which is unfortunate. <laughs> All right, Corinthian, it's up to you to heal her. I'll just use a panacea to pal it. I'm not saving it, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's talk about Scorched Earth. So Scorched Earth is basically the bad gelid barrage. So it does the same damage and has the same range, except its condition is harder to set up. Uh, you have to have a fire tile or a, or a molten earth tile, which both of those are really hard to get. The reason for that is um, like only one or two maps have molten tiles. So you're going to be hard pressed to consistently find that. Uh, so that's the first issue. The other issue is it's generally easier to set up ice than fire. Fire burns out faster. Ice, you just, it works on any single tile except for like molten, which is very infrequent as we just learned. So, objectively, like, ice is just so much easier to play around that it's not worth entertaining doing, like, you know, Scorched Earth spam because it's just not a thing. Scorched Earth, it's just not good, to be honest. It's not that useful. It's so much, like, you have to take dam you have to take chip damage from standing in fire. Uh, you might be tempted to use it if an enemy has uh, a weakness to fire, but you can just throw a firestone. Like in this case, it looks like Gelid Barrage would be okay here, and that is true. Uh, but because there's a plush shape of enemies, what I can actually do is just throw a stone. And obviously I can't gel it anyways because it's too... Um, like, it costs too much, so we can just throw a stone here. Get a kill and then move. Frederica's uh, fire has been messing up her ice tiles, so she kind of is like a natural... She doesn't really play well with Frederica. <laughs> and, and generally the tile setup thing can be a liability in some ways. Because she needs specific tiles, so... On it, like, Battery Gaia's Roar is very legit. And then if you don't want to do that... Uh, you can just throw a stone, set up your own ice tiles, run Corinthian. This map's weird because there's just so many enemies coming in from everywhere. I don't think it's really a good example of how a match tends to be. Just throwing some ice tiles in this guy. Kind of retreat. This is like one of these weird like bonus mission maps. Uh, okay, so IV Beam is strong one can be used. I did go over that. All right, so let's talk about Rock Toss. So one of her abilities, I, I heard, I've heard like one person say Rock Toss is good. It's not. Uh, it does less damage than a basic attack. It might be able to, it looks like it can trigger follow-up attacks, which is okay, but throwing a large Lightning Stone should deal more damage than Rock Tossing. So for those reasons, I don't recommend using it. Just set this up. Oops, I did not mean to expose her back, but we can kind of mitigate that. Let's use a healing item on this guy here. Let us our fortunes. All right. Okay, so Medina. So <laughs> this like plus shape here, like the thing, the big thing with like when you should Jalad barrage or not is when you have more things lined up than you do in a plus shape. So if there's things in a plus shape, throwing an item is always better. It just will almost always deal more damage. Uh, Medina could actually double items here and kill these. This is like a legit thing to do on Medina. Uh, in this case, what I'll do is I'll just double items. And let me see. I'm trying to see how many things I can hit. So you can see there, all these are weak to fire. So gel barraging doesn't really make sense here. So actually, it would make sense for her just to kill these. But this is not a Medina video, so we'll just do this. For the sake of argument, I guess. Um, let me see what your move is. So she's not going to be able to hit these with what she wants. We'll do this. We'll just uh, hit her with a 
thing. We'll just have our guys roar here. This is this is an example of a map where there's a ton of enemies that are resistant to ice for literally no reason. This honestly, this is an exception. There's like one or two maps where there's a lot of ice resistant enemies. Uh, so what you could do is you would just position yourself as best you can for a guy's roar. As long as it hits like three targets, it's usually worth doing. We weren't able to get tracking off, but it didn't matter. Because it cost you five TP anyways. So basically, if you have a battery, as long as if there's ice resistant enemies, you just throw fire stones on them. Because ice resistant enemies are always weak to fire. Or you just spam guys roar with the battery, and then that's totally fine. Otherwise, you can be gelled barraging. And you can see like how effective Eridor just shutting things down is in this game. Uh, he might as well just start pushing back. Or no, he can't. Alright, whatever. This guy's gonna smack me. But items are Giovanna's best friend. As a damage dealer, if you don't want to like run battery, she can greatly benefit from item spam. Like with most damage dealers. Because on a dead turn, instead of just doing a basic attack, if you could hit clumped up enemies, you're better off doing that every single time. Right, we're going to Raging Beast Frederica for once. Okay, so getting enemies to line up is somewhat easy. On a map like this, it's difficult because essentially you're holding a position and enemies are spawning from every direction. So it's actually quite difficult to get them to line up. So this is kind of an exception, but you can see how these enemies are starting to passively line up as they're approaching us. As long as only one thing can be hit, so it could be Eridor, it could be a decoy, whatever. Enemies that are approaching you tend to line up on their own. And you can always use choke points and corners. So for example, if you were to hold this position uh, and then enemies were forced to wrap around it, and you had like Eridor here, you can line them up. So just some things to consider for getting those lined up attacks off. Oh, she doesn't have the TP. She can always battle cry too, but you know, that's true of any unit. Uh, let's see what else I want to talk about. Just make sure I've covered everything. We'll do a few more turns. I've covered the- I have 10 points I've covered, so that's good. I'll go over her kit really quick. So it's like double items. Here you go. Here you go. Okay. She generally doesn't play well with fire mages or with fire stones because they melt the ice, which gives you puddles. Um, and Splash is a terrible skill that should almost never be used. You can use it situationally. I mean, it does have a range of 0 to 6. So, like, if you need to spot heal someone and there's, like, water, you can use it to spot heal. Um, and, and, like, the for example, for this turn, let's say there was, like, more enemies lined up. I could Gelid Barrage these. But because these are resistant, so 100, that puts them at 135, let's see what happens if I just throw a single Firestone. Alright, it still does less damage, but it hits more things and should kill one of them as well. Yeah, and then she can run. And trigger tracking. So you should always be looking to conserve TP on her. I guess that's kind of like point eleven. If you can kill something with a stone, you should. That right, Eridor got nuked. <laughs> that's unfortunate. There is no mercy. Alright, I can in tandem her. With this terrain, I should... So, I have a few options here. I could gel barrage... Actually, I couldn't. The ice melted. I got, no, I can gel barrage one. I can gel barrage these two, uh, but because this is one shot anyways... And, here, let's see. Let's see what we can do with gel barrage. So it hits, it, it will kill that one and won't kill that one. Gaia's Roar, however, will kill both of these and also damage the other mage. So in this case, Gaia's Roar is way better. Let the very land of grant me so we got a double kill there, which is pretty sick. Yeah, this is a weird map. Enemies are just spawning everywhere, so this is probably her worst map. But that's actually a good thing uh, for the case of this video, because it shows that even though... We're melting a lot of these ice tiles to target weaknesses. We're just essentially spamming, you know, damage stones, which is what she should be doing. Triggering tracking, 
catching some battery and spamming Gaia's Roar. She's still able to deal really meaningful damage, even though her gel barraging is not really effective right now, because for whatever reason, every single one of these mages is resistant to ice, and it just keeps spawning those in, which is very rare. There, there's like almost no campaign missions that are like this, so... This is, this is arguably one of her worst maps for a few reasons, and she's still able to deal a lot of damage just with item, with, with stone spam, triggering trekking, catching some battery, Gaia's Roar spam. Gaia's Roar, if it can hit at least like three enemies, does really good damage. And it's pretty easy to hit three enemies because for example, right here, if I just put her here, it'll hit three. Uh, if I put her here, it'll hit four. So it's pretty easy to set it up because it's a plus shape with infinite range. The only thing that reduces its range is height. So, pretty crazy. Uh, Alright, Corintin. Alright, he will just kind of shut one of these down, I'm sure. Using his 100... These are lower level enemies, so 100% silence, that's why. Uh, we're just going to fast acting her, just to get one more turn with Giovanna in, and then wrap this up. Uh, we'll just move... I'm pretty sure Medina's dead, but... So what she could do here... She still has a res earring that she can use. These guys are weak. It's 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 a thing. There, there, there's almost... I, I can guarantee you there's like no map that has like fucking 10 ice resistant mages. This is a, a huge exception. Uh, she can move in there. Um, probably be better to like move in here. So this gets me tracking. Uh, and then I can throw on ice tiles. So this is how she sets herself up. You just, you just move, you get tracking, you throw it on ice. So in this case, these guys are weak, so that's good. Alright, so we'll throw it on ice. Alright, now she can use Jellid next turn. He's resistant. Sorry, we'll hit him with it anyways. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm not used to the sound. I finally figured out how to have it barely appear in OBS so I can kind of hear what's happening. Because I'm just otherwise playing silent. All right, Benedict. All right, we're just gonna use now. This will be her last turn. Just to show what she's all about. All right, so we're on pavement still, which is unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, she does. She does. She definitely takes some planning. Uh, I could hit these with Gel Barrage. And it's really good damage. Like, the, like don't. But, like, the misplays of me, like, not setting up tiles optimally. Like, you would have Corentin alive. There'd be way more ice tiles. You do not run her with Frederica. You do not run her with Narv spamming Scorch. You do not use Fire. I was just doing that to target the elemental weakness of those mages because there's just, like, a ton of them. But you can see here how insanely, how, how good it can be. And if, if as long as it hits two to three enemies, it's worth doing. So let's just use it. And then it creates a ton of tiles. And once once you start gel barraging, it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy where it just keeps itself going. Because it just keeps creating so many tiles. I guess we can have Medina, if Medina doesn't die, use um, fast acting. Oh, she got paralyzed. Son of a bitch. <laughs> we would actually want her to die in that case. So that she would lose her Paralyze, so that's unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, Gelled Barrage and Gaia's Roar, and then Item Spam are the most optimal ways to use Giovanna. Uh, some people might tell you to use like a Basic Attack, or to use Rock Toss. Rock Toss is a waste of TP. Basic Attack is just... W the only time you should use Basic Attack is if it's a single target, and the back crit does more damage than a large, light a large Thunderstone. That is the only time. Otherwise, it's a waste. So you are always better off throwing stones unless the back crit does significant damage rock toss does less damage than a basic attack and it'll always do less damage than hitting two if, it, if you can hit two targets with an elemental stone rock toss is terrible lightning stone will out damage it most elemental stones will out damage it elemental stone targeting weakness will out damage it it's a waste of tp don't bother uh it's just bad and ivy beam is great when you can use it but it's hard to set up Splash is something you can use from time to time. TP to power, this gives you like a slight damage increase uh, the higher your TP. Basically, in order to use Gaia's Roar, it'll always boost the damage to the maximum. And it's like, it's very slight. It's like 1% or something. It's very low. Uh, but yeah, Gelid Barrage, Gaia's Roar, 
IV beam when you can, throwing stones, running around, triggering, trekking for TP. That's how you have to play this unit. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. If you found this useful, definitely like and subscribe. I'm going to be finishing the rest of these characters uh, for this game, for advanced guides. So yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for checking us out, and peace.